Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and the Victory Church. So glad to have you all tonight. God is good. Jesus is Lord. Uh, the blessings of God are abounding in all areas of life. And uh, we are kept safe from all bad weather in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, supposed to be some here in our area tomorrow. And we're just going to believe God that we are kept safe and protected in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking, and that's why we, you know, this kind of goes along with our teaching. We're talking about our words and uh, your words, your tongue, your future, uh, the things that we speak. And um, we need to be aware of the power and authority of our words. And so we talked, we kind of started in last week just a little bit. I got on the edge. How can words change things? Um, particularly our bodies, our circumstances, our lifestyle. Um, and we, we kind of covered a little bit, uh, you know, number one, is, you know, scriptures of speaking and confessing, how that, um, that the things we say are governing the things that are happening in our lives. And this is the biblical principle um, that we need, to, we need to operate in. Not what we operate in it, we need to understand it. Because if you're speaking negative, you're speaking contrary to the word of God, you are setting in motion things with your words. Um, and we've given examples of that in the past, like um, Elvis Presley saying, you know, J.D. Sumner, who was the uh, J.D. Sumner and the Stamps, his backup group for a number of years um, after the Jordanaires, um, said if he heard, heard him say it once, he heard him say it 10,000 times, that, if, uh, that he would die about at the same age his mother died, which was, I think, I forgot what that was, but he died the same age his mother did. Um, but he, he confessed it and confessed it and confessed it and confessed it. And there's other, there's other things we can share along those lines. Um, so we just want you to be aware that your words have power and your words have authority. Um, but, but how do we, how do we do this? Well, number one, um, we put the word first. If you want Bible results, you got to speak Bible words. In other words, you need to be speaking what the word says about circumstances and not how you feel about circumstances. Your feelings are irrelevant to reality. What I mean by that is <clears throat> the word of God is a higher reality um, than, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to load me up. I never got out here. And let me share, let me share real quick because it, would, it wouldn't come up. My, my, my little phone, they want this, me to buy a new one. And it's running like a three-legged dog here. Um, our words and the things that, that the Bible teaches is what we should be saying and not how we feel. Um, you may not feel uh, blessed, but the Bible says I've been, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. You may wake up tomorrow morning and not feel saved. Well, the Bible says if you confess Jesus as the Lord and believe in your heart God raised it from the dead, you're saved. Um, whether you feel it or not. And uh, I like to share this a lot of times when I say that. Um, don't wake up next to your wife, guys, and go, I don't feel married today, and go out and find you another woman. Because the next thing that'll be happening is I'll be giving your, your, we'll be reading your obituary in the paper. Okay? So uh, we, we need to realize that feelings are not to be governing us. That's the voice of the flesh. That's the voice of how things around you are going on. But you will never change the circumstances of life saying what the circumstances are. The only way to change them is to say, like God, like God did, called Abraham. Remember when God called Abram, changed his name from Abram at 99 years old, to Abraham, meaning the father of many nations, and he didn't have any kids. Hello. And can you imagine Abraham showing up at the city gate as a, as a city elder and saying, fellows, my name is no longer Abram, it's Abraham, and them looking at him and then thinking, yeah, we saw Sarah last week. She's 90, 89 actually. That woman is older than dirt, and you calling yourself the father of many nations? With no children? But see, God knows the power of speaking faith. And he, that's how he trained, that's how he, he made us to be. And so Abraham started, everybody started calling Abraham, Abraham. And a year later, 
uh, Isaac was born. Now, <clears throat> I use, I, a lot of times I will refer to Sarah as prune womb Sarah because uh, her womb was dried up. The Bible says it had ceased to be with her after the manner of women. In essence, she wasn't going to have any children. Um, 90 years old, 90-year-old women don't have, I don't, I, I, I've been around, go to some nurse, go anywhere you want to go. I can't find any 90-year-old women pregnant. You just don't. 80-year-old, 70, you don't find them. But the power of faith through spoken words released that. And that's why God had Abram's name changed to Abraham, to teach us the principle of speaking. Hallelujah. And so we have to put the word first. Secondly, we have to learn and make a decision that we're going to live in love. <clears throat> One of the greatest detriments to faith is not walking in love. Why? Well, the word of God says faith worketh by love. Now that, that structure for King James, you know, faith works by love. Faith, work. But that word that, that, that's translated worketh, works, comes from a Greek word that means is energized, empowered by love. Faith receives its power. It comes from the word of God, but it's empowered by love. Paul wrote and said <clears throat> that if I have faith to move mountains and have, lot, have not love, I am nothing. Uh, Dad Hagen used to say, he said, if, I, if I'm praying about something and uh, using my faith, and it's not working. The first place I check up on is my love walk. Yeah. First place I check up on is my love walk. We, we have to um, make sure that we walk in love. Um, I remember when I was at, at the Rainbow, uh, well, a few years afterwards, Brother Hagen shared about a um, woman who was uh, at healing school. We, uh, Rainbow has a... Um, has a place where they, people come from all over the country and they, they come and they come to healing classes where they teach them uh, what this Bible says about healing, um, tr you know, and, and then they pray for them. But people come sometimes one, two, three, four weeks at a time um, <coughs> to be in the atmosphere of faith, to be taught the word of God. Why? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word until they're schooled in faith from the word. And there was um, one day Brother Hagin got off on... Um, teaching on the subject of walking in love while he was teaching on faith for healing. And um, in the middle of that service, the, some woman jumped up and, and ran out of the building. Well, they get the, the back story afterwards. Um, she was there because she had had an operation and they slit her esophagus accidentally and she could not eat solid food. Uh, she was on a liquid diet and had been for several years and uh, it was very, very damaging to her body. I mean, she was, uh, you can imagine only living on liquids <clears throat> for an extended period of time. And um, while she was in that service teaching on love, the Lord brought something to her remembrance. Well, what it was, was her and her brother had had a falling out a number of years before, maybe 15 years earlier, and hadn't talked since. And while he was teaching on walking in love and, you know, and being in forgiveness, um, she realized that it wasn't her faith that was a problem. Her, that fact that she wasn't in walking in love and forgiveness was. Well, she got out, and this is before cell phones, ran across the street, and across the street was a payphone on a Mexican restaurant uh, there that was called the Monterey. It's no longer there. But it was called the Monterey House. <clears throat> she got on the phone, called her brother, um, got him on the phone, and um, asked him to forgive her. And he said, I forget, I don't, they couldn't even remember what it was they were mad about. And um, while she's on the phone and they're, you know, they've, they've forgiven, they've, they've, they've uh, apologized and uh, made up and made plans to meet and, and to get together uh, and see each other. She's healed. Her healing just manifests right there. She went in that restaurant and the woman's been on a liquid diet for five years and ate three Mexican meals. Now, I'm going to tell you, on a good, healthy stomach, sometimes Mexican food can light you up. Okay? But no food in your stomach for five years, and now you're eating two, three Mexican meals? And listen, I'm going to tell you something. This is back before, you know, uh, such a, a Latino migration had taken place all over the country. I mean, this was like 
super authentic Mexican. I mean, I mean, it, it was caliente. It was hot. It burned you up. But she was totally healed because walking in love, walking in love is important to your faith. And so when you're, when you're believing God and you're speaking faith and you're living things, make sure that you got your love walk in the right place. Amen. Cause faith works by love. Uh, third, you got to also, you got to, you got to decide that you're going to live by faith. Walking by faith, living by faith does not just come automatically. You don't get born again and all of a sudden you're, I'm a faith man and automatic. I'm, I'm like a robot. It doesn't work that way. You have to make a choice as to whether or not you're going to believe God. Whose report will you believe? And um, our, our answer to that is we will believe the report of the Lord. <clears throat> if you do not believe the Bible, if you do not believe God's word, if you do not, it won't work for you. You have to make a choice. You're going to live according to the word of God. Romans 1.17 says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Not only do you need to live by faith, you are told that you are going to live by faith. That's how God designed us. What do you mean by living by faith? Living by faith does not mean you go through life haphazard, that whatever comes, you just trust that God had a reason for it, and that's why it happened. That's not, that's not, that's not even Bible. As a matter of fact, um, if it was God's will that everything happened that happened in your life, what you've done, you've, resol you, you've uh, resolved yourself to the circumstances of life. You've abdicated the responsibility of dealing with the circumstances of life, speaking the word, living according to the word. Uh, I tell people all the time, you know, people come, you know, <clears throat> they'll say things like, um, well, I, I, you know, I want, I want prayer for my, um, for cancer. Uh, the Lord, I don't know why the Lord put cancer on me. Um, but you know, pray for me that he'll heal me. And if not, he'll give me you know, he'll give me the grace to put up with it and learn the lesson he's trying to teach me. People say stuff like this all the time. Now, now, number one, if you believe cancer is the will of God, then you should not be praying for God to take it away. As a matter of fact, you should ask for more. Because if it's going to make you a better Christian to have cancer, you should pray for a double portion. See, it's just not by, it's foolish. And it's foolish because the Bible says, that if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. The prayer of faith, the anointing of oil, shall save. Now, the word save is sozo, also means to heal. Shall heal the sick. And if he's forgiven, if committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. Um, 1 Peter 2, 24. Whose own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Now, stop right there. It's not God's will for you to be oppressed. Jesus, uh, when you look at I, um, uh, Isaiah, but you also look at um, um, oh, Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel. What's God? Gospel means good news to poor, to the poor. Recovery of sight to the blind. To mend up the brokenhearted. Hallelujah. And preach deliverance to the captives. Sickness is a bondage. Jesus came to deliver us. Jesus also said, the works that I do shall you do. And greater than these, because I go into the Father. Now stop and think about that. I, I, listen, I know, I know people have preached for years that, you know, that um, sickness is God's plan to teach you a lesson. Or 
A loved one dies, and we just don't know why the Lord took them. God doesn't take them. And he will receive them into heaven, but he doesn't take them from the earth. I, I was at a funeral one time a number of years ago, and her, God looked on the heavenly mantle and kneaded our rose for his mantle and reached over the banisters of heaven and plucked this dear saint from the earth. And Nathan said it makes one be an ugly rose. <laughs> I have to agree with you. And then, of course, the family's all there. Yeah, that's right. He's on the, he's on the heavenly man. What gave this special privilege to be on the mantle of heaven? Well, as far as we know, there is no mantle in heaven like that. There's a throne. There's angels all out. You know, we have, we're, we're, heaven's a busy place, but... That's not Bible. You know, we don't know why God ran over your child in the middle of the road with a back truck. He's trying to teach you a lesson. And, and, and I have to say that's, that's enough to gag a maggot. And that takes a lot to do. That's not my father. He doesn't kill children to teach a parent a lesson. Hello. Dear Lord. He's not going to kill your husband to make you a stronger woman. No. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, destroy. I have come, Jesus said, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. With long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. So what goes on? People not living in faith. As a matter of fact, Paul, uh, Paul writes to the church of Corinth and said at the Lord's table, people have died not rightly discerning the Lord's body. There's deeper there than that, <clears throat> than what people have always thought. They haven't rightly discerned that Jesus, by Jesus' stripes, ye were healed. And it's cost people their life. When we can speak the word of God, hallelujah. I like to say, uh, and I remember a few years ago, I had something happen. I got I mean, I woke up, I was throwing up, I was, I mean, I thought I was dying. And in between gagging and throwing up, I was going, I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I live and, I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. But I'm not going, I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> I mean, I felt, I mean, I passed, I mean, I just was like, my head was spinning. I didn't know what was going on. But you got to speak the word. You've got to speak the word. You have to live by faith and not by sight. And the word of God produces faith. So when things are going on, bad things are going on, and we, people have written books, why bad things happen to good people. Because there's a bad devil. My God, stop blaming it on God. It's a fallen system. Adam committed high treason. Mankind went under the authority of Satan. Jesus even said that ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. That's why we must be born again. Born out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Now, Satan's no longer our father. If you're born again, he ain't your daddy. If you're not born again, the devil's your daddy. You say, who's your daddy? If you ain't saved, the devil is. <clears throat> if you're born again, the father is. He, he sent his spirit into our heart whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Closest translation they get to Abba is daddy. It's an affectionate term. Daddy. He's my daddy. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Thank God he's my daddy. Can y'all say amen out there? Amen. And he's a good God. Why callest thou me good, Jesus said. There is none good save God alone. Every good, hallelujah. James says, and every, listen to this. Every good and perfect gift cometh from the Father of cometh down from above from the Father of lights. Listen to this. In whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God doesn't change. I am the Lord and I change not. 
Jesus went round about. I'm just I'm quoting scriptures, not giving all the references, but I'm quoting them. Jesus went round about the villages, preaching in their synagogues, teaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Then Hebrew says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But you'll hear people preach stuff and believe stuff that Jesus healed by he was here on earth and now he's in heaven making you sick. Some of those same people will tell you he makes people sin. He makes people sinners. He makes prostitutes prostitutes. And murderers, murderers. And I'm thinking, your brain is scrambled. You don't, you're, by, you, you're, you're messed up. Your Bible reading needs some help. They get over to that extreme sovereignty, um, extreme Calvinism, really. It came out of Calvinistic teaching, um, you know, of, of, of absolute predestination. You, I mean, you got churches that, that, that teach that, you're, you're going to be saved whether you want to or not, or you're going to go to hell whether you want to or not. There ain't nothing you can do about it. God's already determined who will and who won't. And, and you think, hey, did you read the Bible? Because you know, the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Then why would he turn around if he's not willing that any should perish and make some perish or make everybody who perishes perish just because he chose the other ones over them? We need, we need to be better Bible students. And the only way to get faith is to be a better Bible student. Hallelujah. Um, I didn't see any amen flying up on my screen. Anybody been thumbing me up? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Come on, guys. Y'all out there? Hallelujah. So, faith doesn't change God. Let me make that statement again. Faith does not change change God again I am the Lord I change not and in in the Old Testament he gave his he referred to himself by the name of we, we use that we use Jehovah and Jehovah is a um I don't say made up it's not a made up word it's it takes the Hebrew YHWH the vowelless four-letter name for God that um, we translate Lord, what they call small caps in the King James Bible in the Old Testament. That's, that was, and we put vowels in there and created the word Jehovah. Or some people say Yahweh. Exact same, came from the exact same word, meaning the exact same thing, just different schools of thought on how to translate it and make it pronounceable. Okay? Um, dr the dramatic languages translated Jehovah because they use a J for the Y. Um, other languages kept the, the continuity of the YHWH, put a A and an E in there, in there and created Yahweh. But it's the same Hebrew word that it came from. Okay, But that name, Yahweh, Jehovah, is the distinct covenant name of God. And then seven other names... God took that word, Jehovah, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, and gave it a compound name, um, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. This is all in the Old Testament. Uh, these are all uh, the names of God that he gave in his covenant relationship to Israel. You know, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Jehovah Tzidkenu. The Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner of victory. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Um, there's a couple more. I, I'm trying to think of some of them that I've left out in there, but Jehovah to Sid, can you? I've already, um, I did that one. Um, I was going to get to Rafa last. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Jehovah Um Kadesh. Um, anyway, there, there's there's seven of them. There's seven of them, and I can't. I don't have them all on top of my head, huh? Jehovah Jireh, <laughs> the um, our provider. The Lord is our provider. He makes our provision. 
Remember when, when Abraham was going to offer Isaac up on the altar? Thank you, Jess. I was like, huh? Adi Shalom, the Lord's our peace. Um, when Abraham was going to offer Isaac up on the altar, and um, Abraham said, the Lord himself provided, the Lord will provide himself a ram. And then when uh, he was about to slay Isaac and offer him, the Lord stopped him. And then there was a ram in the thicket. He brought the, lamb up, the ram over and, and offered it up. And the name of that place was Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. The Lord is my provision. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the, but the very first of the compound covenant names is, I find interesting. It's Jehovah Rapha. He said, I will not bring, if you will hearken to my words, I will not bring any diseases that, um, uh, that I permitted upon the children the, 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 from the Egyptians. For I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. Now, God says, I am the Lord, I change not. Now, people say, well, that was Old Testament. That was for Israel. You know, um, the Bible teaches us that, that all the things with Israel were in samples for us or examples. Secondly, God said, <clears throat> I change not. Schofield, um, now, if you don't know this, you know, just like a lot of, you know, Word of Faith Charismatics called Dad Hagen, you know, Dad Hagen and, and look to him for a lot of, uh, understanding of certain things. Schofield is that um, was really considered that in the Baptist circles is, you know, Dr. Schofield. Um, and let's face it. I mean, tremendous amount of um, good stuff in his, you know, his teachings. And, uh, but when he comes and, and talks about uh, salvation and sozo and healing, um, he talks, uh, he talks about um, these different things. And when he talked about, uh, the Jehovah being the compound covenant name of God. He said Jehovah was the covenant name of God. The other ones were an increasing self-revelation of his who he is. So Jehovah was a co covenant name, but the hyphenated names were an increasing self-revelation. In other words, every time he gave that, he revealed more about who he is. I am the Lord that heals. I am the Lord that brings peace. I am the Lord who is your victory. I am the Lord uh, who is your righteousness. I am the Lord. You understand? You see? Um, I am the Lord who makes provision for you. It wasn't I am only that here. He was revealing who he is. Every time there was a new name, he revealed who he was. And then he says, I am the Lord. I change not so God didn't get to the New Testament and suddenly become the God who makes you sick when he said I am the Lord that heals you I'm the Lord your physician hello when the people of Israel disobeyed God and the fiery serpents came out and began to bite them. And Moses went to God and he said, take a pole, put a brazen serpent on it, put it in the middle of the camp. If they get bitten, if they'll look at it, they'll be healed. Well, that serpent was a type of Christ. Because Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So not only was he the, the suffering servant to bring a redemption to people, he was the suffering servant to bring healing to people. And I, I like uh, uh, F.F. Bosworth in his book, Christ the Healer, says, if the type brought healing to the people, the answer type brought, will bring healing to the people. Jesus is the, uh, the fulfillment of the type. And if you could get healed looking at the type, Dear Lord, how much more can we be healed looking to the real? I mean, even the medical industry, go look by, right by any ambulance today or get behind one and look up there, and there on there somewhere is a serpent on a staff. And that came from that Old Testament where Moses put the brazen serpent on the staff and people were healed when they looked on it. I look to Jesus now and get healed. Amen. So what I'm saying is understand your faith does not change who God is. It doesn't change what God does. Hello? It changes the circumstances. Your faith is not crowbar, uh, crowbarring the arm of God. 
Are you here? It's not putting God into an arm bar and forcing him in to acquiescing to your demand. It is changing the circumstances. Hallelujah. While we look not at the, if, um, <clears throat> I believe 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, while we look not, or 2 or Corinthians 4, which, let me know. Uh, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. That word temporal means subject to change. They're changeable. 418, 2 Corinthians 418. Huh? Romans 8? 18? Okay. Something that, okay. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, for the things which are seen are temporal, subject to change. Things which are not seen are eternal. God's word is forever settled in heaven. God's word will change the temporary. God's word will change the circumstances. When you start using faith, when you start speaking the word, you are not changing God. Well, God was trying to kill me with cancer, but I guess I learned a lesson, and, he, he, and I, I, I was able to sway him into healing me. No! He's already the healer. Healing's already been provided. Hello. So when we speak the word, we're not trying to get God to do <coughs> what God has already said he's done. We are demanding the circumstances change. We're demanding our body line up with the word. I spoke to my toe for four months. And watched it supernaturally heal. When the doctor, Dr. Hacky Wacky, wanted to cut it off. Even back after two weeks when it was starting to get better. He's saying, well, you're not out of danger yet. Just understand, we're probably still going to need to come back and take off part of it. I walked out of that office and said, no, you don't in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I'm keeping my whole toe in Jesus' name. Toe, you line up with the word of God. I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I played Dad Hagen's series on healing. And, on, and there he had a confession. <coughs> on um, and, and that confession, he'd say, he'd be going, you know, body, you line up with the Word of God. The Word of God says you're healed. Body, line up with the Word of God. If the Word of God says you're healed, you're healed. And I am telling you, as I played that, I would go to sleep with that series playing. But I would wake up every time. It got to that confession in the middle, maybe three, four o'clock in the morning. I'd wake up and I'd be laying in bed going, body, the word of God says you're healed. I command you to line up with the word of God. Tell you're healed in Jesus name. Amen. <clears throat> and um, I even had a, the doctor tell me, Hacky Wacky finally released me to the podiatrist. He, he, he no longer had any interest in me because I was no longer considered an infectious disease. And, you know, he, won't get to get, he didn't get to cut it off. But when um, the um, podiatrist released me after the four months, he looked at me and said, Mr. Taylor, you should be a case study. I said, why is that, Doc? He said, because people in your situation don't keep a toe. I said, Doc, I told you that... <clears throat> I would do what you said to do, but I knew how to use my faith. And because he looked at my toe and said, well, I'm going to call that toe healed. And I looked at him and said, Doc, I've been doing that for four months. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I still got complete toe down here. Glory to God. I mean, it was ulcerated down to the bone. I mean, it was like a dark, like a cave in there. And, if you turn, and then you look at pictures of it and your turn stomach gets turned. Like, it was nasty. I mean, the, the bandages would be put on every night. You take them off, they're just full of this drainage, and they, they go debrade it and cut off all the dead tissue. And, you know, and it, was, it was just, it was not a pretty thing. But it kept healing and kept healing and kept healing. And stayed, they were always surprised at how much it had healed, how much it had healed, how much it had healed. And just went, you know, and, and not one single person that worked on my case, the nurses, the doctors, the two different doctors, the nurses, any of them believed I was going to keep my toe. 
but I did. And I didn't change God. I changed the circumstances. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I changed the circumstances. How? By faith. By faith. Glory to God. The change is made by words. Uh, Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead. That's King Jimmy, for he makes the dead alive. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. I believe what Ramoth says, who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. <coughs> See, faith is not changing God. Faith is changing the circumstances. You're calling that which does not exist as though it did. If you're sick, you're not healed. You're not whole. You call yourself healed that doesn't exist right now as though it did. In Jesus' name. You're not lying. That's just a lie. No, it's not. Was God lying when he made reference to things that do not exist as though they did? Well, he's God. Stop. If a lie is a lie, then it's a lie. And God doesn't lie. To call things that do not exist as though they did, and you're speaking the word, is faith. Think about God. How he created this. He said, you know, King James you know, uh, is so flowery and so poetic. Elizabethan lang the Elizabethan language was very poetic. But it, you know, and, and God said, let there be light. But actually the Hebrew says, God said, light be. Light was. Now we know from science that the universe is expanding in every direction at the speed of light from a single point. Why? Because God said, light be. And he never told it to stop. That word is still being obeyed by the universe. It's still obeying where he said light be, light was. So God made reference to things that do not exist as though they did. This is how faith works. Jesus told us to speak to the mountain, believe in your heart, and say it with your mouth. Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. God... Jesus, I think about the fig tree. Jesus didn't stop after they said, Master, behold, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. Jesus didn't stop and take a, you know, a, a Napoleon posture and go, well, I'm the son of God and it has to obey me because I'm the son of God and I just want everybody to be known and be proved there by I'm the son of God. That's not what he said. As a matter of fact, what he said was, he turned to them and said, you have faith in God. That if you will say to the mountain, be removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in your heart, but believe the things you say as come to pass. You'll have whatsoever you saith. Amen. We are to live by faith. You got to call things that aren't as though they are. But you can only do that when you have Bible for it. And faith is in your heart. Can I get an amen out there? <clears throat> Secondly, the power lies in consistency. Um, James 3, 2 says, Many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as the perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. In other words, you control your mouth to control everything. And we'll just kind of bring that into you know modern English. Control your mouth, you control everything. It's the bridle. Controlling it. Hello, it's the rudder of your ship. Are y'all here? You gone home? Um, James also uses that same thing. It's like the governor ship. As he turns the wheel, it lists. You know, it obeys him. The tongue's like that. It controls and steers. Now, consistency is important. Hello. If you want to make a right turn, you just don't go like this to the steering wheel. And go. Mm -mm. Why? Because your car just goes. Yep. And right back, you got to turn it and hold it. You got to be, you got to maintain that position to get it to turn. You've got to maintain your position of faith 
And then I'm making fun of my driving out there somewhere, I think, about how I drive. <clears throat> Y'all be nice. Hallelujah. Um, when you're speaking, it's, it's, it's not, this, is, this is not a um, Brill Cream. If some of you old enough to remember Brill Cream, a little dab will do you. You know, you put it in, guys put it in the hair. It was a, a styling gel way from way back, but it really wasn't a gel. It was a cream. And um, you, you put it in your hair, and your hair stayed right where it was. It didn't move. And um, that was the day. <clears throat> and um, a little bit, you know, you say, little dab will do you. So all you need was that little dab. That, that's not how faith works. You, and let me say this. You don't try faith. The Bible had that um, basis before Yoda did. Okay. Yoda stole it, stole it from God. Okay. Try not. Do or do not. Okay. You know, we don't try to live by faith. We live by faith. We speak the word. And it has to be consistent. You can't be going... I believe that I received my healing in Jesus' name. I'm the healed of the Lord. Body, you line up word. And tomorrow you wake up and go, I'm sick as a dog. I'm not going to be able to keep my toe. And then they wake up the next day, I'm keeping my toe. You back next day, I'm going to lose my toe. See, there's no consistency there. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man, James says, think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Hello? A double-minded man is like a, uh, um, uh, let me read that. Don't y'all run out on me. If any man um, lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth all men liberally, upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't waver. It's got to be consistent. You got to live in consistency. You got to, you got, when, you, when you live by faith, you got to say it and stay there. The woman with the issue of blood, for she said and kept on saying, the Greek says, if I could touch him, I'll be whole. If I could touch him, I'll be whole. If I could touch him, I'll be whole. She went out in the middle of the street going, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. Oh my God, what am I going to do if somebody sees me? I'm, 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 I'm unclean. She just kept saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. We, consistency is imperative. So no wavering. I said no wavering. And third, under change, you're changing things and not God is Jesus is the high priest of our words. We're not changing God. We're calling things which be not as though they were. The power lies in our consistency to speak, keep speaking the same thing. And then the understanding that Jesus is watching over our words as our high priest. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession. Same Greek word translated profession. It's translated confession. Christ Jesus. He's the high priest of our confession, of our profession. What we speak, he watches over. And when it's in line with his word, as he, when you're making a confession that's not biblical, he's not going to watch over that and make it happen. Don't be going out there believing with somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband. The Lord done showed me that that is my husband. Yeah. As I, you hear, you've heard my story about pizza girl. Call me one to be a bless her. Believing for somebody else's husband didn't you know what's you know and then I told you you had too much pizza that dream you had because you had indigestion God did not give you that dream Your lusty flesh may have your nasty flesh may have but God didn't Man's married Dear Lord Hello Jesus don't watch over them words 
but he does watch them. The Lord looks over, watches over his word to perform it. God watches over his word to perform it. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, we, we got, um, we, we don't got time to get to the next point or to get through the next point. Because my warming up on the next point will keep me busy for a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So understand we're going to live, we, we are to live by faith. You know, that's, that's in the Bible four times, uh, three times in the New Testament and in various forms, one time in Habakkuk, uh, Old Testament, that the just shall live by faith, the just shall live by his faith, the just shall live by, you know, um, for it is written, the just shall live by faith. That is our lifestyle. That's our calling to live by faith. And when you live by faith, you live by words of faith. When you speak words of faith, you're not changing God. You're changing circumstances. Because, because God is who God is. You can't change him. If he wasn't the healer already, you couldn't make him the healer by speaking it. Hello? Hello? It's who he is. So therefore, when we speak the word, we're speaking to the circumstances that are contrary to the word. We're enforcing a higher reality on that circumstance with the word of God. And that circumstance must yield to the authority of the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 We operate by a higher law. We live under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And it has made us free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Can I get some amens out there? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, um, I want to thank y'all um, for joining us again tonight. We, uh, we appreciate you being with us, and I trust you were ministered to and blessed. Uh, we'll continue next Wednesday night along these lines as we move into um, oh, our, our next point is going to be the actions can make or break our confession of faith. So you get to think on that for a while, for a few days over the next week. Hallelujah. Uh, actions can make or break our, um, our faith. James said, show me your faith. Without your works, I'll show you my faith by my works. And we'll get into to the actions, Paul versus James on the word works. Um, just a totally misunderstood subject by many people who, who are just didn't take time to do a little extra study. Oh, glory to God. Uh, bless their hearts. <clears throat> Amen. Listen, we, we, uh, which, you know, if you want to give tonight, um, we can do, you can do so through PayPal. Uh, to at donations at fvc.org or the, uh, the uh, cash app, which is uh, Faith Victory Church, dollar sign, dollar sign, Faith Victory Church. The word and or and symbol is not in that. It's simply the words Faith Victory Church. All one word. That should be up on your screen by now. Uh, you can give electronically that way your tithe or your offering for the week because we, if you we were in person we would re we would receive the offering but we're doing it electronically so those of you who want to tithe tonight or give tonight you can praise the lord that we'll pray for you that as you give father in jesus name to all those giving right now we thank you the word of god is true we thank you you said that if we bring the tithe and the offering to the storehouse of god that you would bless us herewith and you would open unto us the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we would not have room enough to receive, that we would be a delightsome land. The devourer would be rebuked for our sake, and we would lend to many and not borrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We bless you in the name of Jesus and leave you with these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online.